what a day looks like so since i'm a backend engineer i think i can give out a very clear description about it so it can be either super busy wherein you will not have time even to have lunch you'll be eating on your work desk or it can be super simple wherein you have the problem and you know what you need to code and you're just coding that okay now every th- every piece of line that we write every problem that we resolve there's a discussion because i am thinking from one point of view but there may be there are 10% in my team and all 10 can have different point of views so discussions are important hunting for problem signs of application crashing crashing or you know behaving unexpectedly so every time you know we are on our toes trying to we keep a monitoring we keep monitoring our applications and we try to see that okay how the performance is it can it can go any time it can go down any time we you never know the spike in uh, user request can crash it or somebody may be trying to crash your application people do that all the time okay so you're always on your toes trying to understand you know in the fire fighting mode that any, anything can happen long hours of staring at code and trying to isolate a bug so let's say when i say google.com google is supposed to show me google page but now suddenly something else is showing up or maybe one line the logo is tilted slightly so it is a code problem somebody has to look at the code and try to figure out where did the tilt happen or why did the page not show up as expected long hours of coding a problem and dealing with the code breaking in the first run now this is the most common and probably the most disheartening thing about backend engineering you code something for let's say 4 hours 5 hours you sit at a stretch and you decide that okay i'll finish this and i'll deal with this problem and then in the end when you try to say that okay i'll run it and the code breaks breaks as in it doesn't even compile or it doesn't even run or it doesn't run as you want it to be those are the very common scenarios and that happens like almost every day now let's talk so enough that we have spoken about backend engineering now let's try to understand backend engineering from the perspective of a backend engineering language okay so we'll talk we'll be taking up golang because that's where most of my experience comes from and we'll try to understand that how golang gets utilized uh in backend engineering now golang for people who do not know is a simple programming language is which is widely used on a server side app programming so golang is a backend app uh, backend programming language and it's widely accepted it was it's a statically typed compiled programming language which was developed by google so when i say statically typed and combined compiled programming language what i mean is that the syntaxes are really simple they're statically typed okay there's no objectification done it's a script it's more like a scripting language at the same time it's a compiled programming language so the moment you compile the language you can directly run the binary there's no extra step involved you just say compile and run that's it done go is syntactically similar to c but with memory safety garbage collection structural types and csp style concurrency uh, it's often said about golang that golang is a combination of best of it, it's a combination of java and c wherein it's like best of both the worlds so java has amazing garbage collection you know structure the language is really well structured okay and at the same time c is very efficient but c has memory issues like the amount of me- memory leakages that happen in c are very common but java does not have that so memory safety okay and but c is good with concurrent programming like people who do parallel programming or who write games or you know heavy applications which utilize your cpu or gpu they tend to write all the concurrency in c so golang adopted that from c garbage collection from java memory safety from java and all this coming coming together as a single language and you get golang now go is open source with a large community support of course because it is developed by google and the entire language is open source you can even you know contribute and develop your own features in golang if you wish to it's there on github so we'll see basic introduction of go we'll see some coding and we'll see how we'll try to see how do you write your first program we'll also try to see you know a small web application demo going ahead so this is how a simple hello world would look like in go so in go if you basically want to if you basically want to put out a hello world you want to say hi that's all you need to type format.printl and hello world that's it and the code would basically print hello world over to your screen so it's a single one liner but if you install go on your system and follow the steps you'll actually be able to run this program on your screen okay then the next thing we see is variables in go so people who are familiar with programming variables are what holds your information what holds your data people who are not uh, familiar with programming variables are basically like names which you give to anything so let's say i as a human i'm an entity but i have a name puneet okay so similarly in programming also everything has to have a name so that you can identify what is what so variables 
okay so variables are different types different types name different kind of objects or how should i say information so these this is how the variables are in order to put out a variable in go so in order to put out a variable in go you need to use the var keyword and then whatever the variable name is what type of variable it is and then the value values that you want to set into that variable unlike other programming languages so this is one way of declaring a variable but this is how mostly most of the languages also do support but in go there's a special thing called short declaration which is done by a colon equals so when you put on the left your variable names colon equals values on the right go would automatically understand what you're trying to say initialize a variable and do it for you so basically you can bypass this long process using this one now there are different types of variables in go like most of the programming languages out there there are some common ones some uncommon ones so the common ones are there's an integer to hold your numbers integer 8 with a limit on how big the number can be a string to basically hold any kind of string that you write or any kind of you know how should i say word sentence paragraph that you want to write a constant to define a value and then not to mess with it again and a rune a rune is basically what signifies a character uh, if you open up an ascii table and try to see in the ascii table so in the world of computing every alphabet every special symbol has an integer number that is called a character number uh, so the, the rune basically holds that character number now if you want to make decisions in go now in every programming language you would need to make decisions that basically that's why you're coding right you're trying to some problem and for some problem to happen you need to make some decision so that the solution comes out for any kind of problem some decisions have to happen so in go you have if else you just say if four is greater than three then print it is true otherwise it is false so let's say if three is greater than four print nested if true else nested if false so this is how you can take decisions now these are very simple things that i've done but it can be it can go as complex as you want them to be but the if conditions evaluation still pretty much remains the same okay now let's jump over to demo i think i've given enough and so that you guys can understand what it looks like okay so first what we're going to do is we're going to build a file server now uh, many of you would have seen uh, websites you know which basically uh, you have a list of files when you click on a file the file gets downloaded to your system or it just opens up there okay so those are called ftb servers or file servers and it's a simple backend code wherein you can just create your own file server in a small sec now what i'm gonna do is i'm i'm gonna show you what statically typed mean so if you see this every time i make a change here and i say save i need to build so the moment i say go build or basically this is how you compile if people who are familiar with c or java you would do some cpp uh, the file the file name or java c the file name so in Go, that's all you need to do. And then I can directly execute it. So the moment I execute, it's running. Now let's go and check out where it is. So I'm basically serving my current folder. Uh, this is my current folder and this has so many files out here, if you, as you can see. Now all these files basically are accessible through a web server. Now I can expose this to the world also i have full freedom to do that i can just map it to a ip address on the open internet and anybody or everybody who knows the inner ip address or a domain uh, can come and access these files okay so these are readily available so this is an html form that i created some another html or, or the file got go code or anything so basically this is how it's accessible all of it anything that the browser cannot open gets downloaded here as it just happened okay so moving on now i'll give you a small walkthrough of the code how i did this uh, but will not do with the uh, other examples because more or less all of them are the same so i just created a file server and gave it the directory which i want to serve I, in this case the current directory and i just said handle whenever you get the request just send this out that's it and then i started the server at 8080 port i did not give an ip address because by default everything is localhost if you give an ip address it's your choice so default is localhost 8080 and then it comes up and 
serves my data. Okay, so there's a folder, static folder, which has some files internal to it. Those files are also here. So practically anything and everything that is there in the current directory would basically show up on your web server. That's how it's gonna be. Okay, now moving back. So this is kind of simple. Okay, now let's say if I wanted to build a website, I have, uh, I'm trying to kind of build some static website wherein I just want to, I maybe I bought a domain for myself and I, you know, I need to sh uh, have a fancy resume wherein I would show my website to everybody and then whoever comes and gets to see my resume in a very fancy format. So in that case also, you can just, again, uh, build your own static website. Basically, all you need to do is do a lot of HTML coding, put that in a folder, and then just serve that folder. So again, what would happen is the moment you go there, voila, you have your website ready. Now, of course, I'm not done a lot of uh, fancy thing. But yeah, you feel, feel creative, write as much as HTML code you want to. And basically, yeah. Th that's how it's gonna be. So if you see the H uh, the static file that I wrote, basically I have done nothing. I've just written a simple HTML format here. So whatever I change here basically gets reflected on that page. Okay, so feel, feel free to be as creative as you want to, or you can use online tools to generate your own HTML page and you know then serve it wherever you would want to. Now, sometimes what we do is when we log into a system or you know log into a web server we basically enter information say login information okay so what we're going to do is we're going to create a simple form wherein i'm going to ask you for some details and then i'm going to print them on my server so basically that's called information submitting wherein you are uh, submitting some kind of information to your web application or web server so let's say my mail at the rate mail.com and then i say some subject and then this is some message so the moment i say submit it's all gone from here that's what happens in your web application also right when you, you're sending feedback to flipkart or you know logging into amazon it just vanishes from here but where did it go it basically all came in here so it came to me in a certain format that my application can understand okay and then my application can decide what I want to do with your information, whether I want to print it, whether I want to store it in some database or whatever it may be like, I have a lot of choices. Okay. Or maybe I just want to sell it to someone. Yeah. So I can do that. Basically you have given information. Okay. Now this is the interaction that we have seen, which happens, uh, which is happening when you're getting say information from the client to the server. Now what, how does a uh, server get to send it from the, server to the client so let's say you as a server you as a client are requesting some information and you're saying that okay i need please send over this information to me so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i have a database running of course that's my local database so i'm just running a local database and i'm gonna read some information from there this just random information and uh, i'm gonna fetch it so what i did is i just ran a database call I got this information from my database sitting, which is sitting somewhere out here. And I just read all the details. So this is some random data that I saved in. And I just decided to print it. Now I could have sent that information when you asked for a, when you send in a request saying that, okay, send me this information. I could have easily done that. So it's a choice that I have as a developer. So a developer's work is not, a backend developer's work is not just focused on you know, writing complex like codes and handling client requests. It's also about how I, how I define my database interactions. So if you get to see this, then the database is not running on this machine. Database is running somewhere else. I had to connect to the database, get all the information, figure out what data I wanted to read, read that in a proper format and then print out. So in this case, I just printed it out. But if I had to send it to the user, then again, that is an additional step. So to put it in perspective, me asking Google, hello world, involves a lot more than this. This is just a very simple hardcoded example. But yeah, so any information that you request, even on a Flipkart or Amazon server about a phone that you're looking on their website or on their mobile application involves all of this happening. Okay, now quickly moving on to the industry. So what choices does the industry offer? Now, backend engineers are amongst the highest paid engineers. Now, when I say this, 
uh not every engineer is high pay highly paid of course it depends on your skill like it does in every industry what your skills are uh, how good are how good are you at work so we see in the newspapers that okay google hired an engineer and they offered him 1 crore rupees of the package or some fancy information that we see on the, on the website or in the newspapers basically uh, those engineers get to get hired to do work which are more or less in line to what a back end engineer does they're also going to be writing some code either for gmail or youtube or fa- uh, some other google product to make it work well okay so from extensive range of coding languages to work types there's always something that can interest you now back end engineering is not like uh, okay some of you might like go some of you might say like i'm comfortable with c i'm comfortable with java or there are like 15 20 languages i don't know so you can choose what comforts you find a job and start working okay uh, that's as simple as it learning a programming language basically the idea remains the same the logic remains the same once you've learned a language switching to another one is relatively easy is what i feel uh, almost every back every business requires a back end developer which results into high employability rate now understand this whatever the product is be it your banking telecom e-commerce retail you name it everybody has some software running because all the businesses are digital these days and those softwares are written by some back end developer sitting there trying to figure you know ease out the problem hence the employability rates are good you are good at your programming language you are good at solving those problems you'll get a job now let's talk about the current market study so a disclaimer this list does not include golang that is in the next slide so current market study says so these are the top 10 languages as of today so basically this is a monthly data this uh, data would change on every month and a yearly data would come out at the end of december okay so i'm showing a monthly data so as of this month these are the top 10 programming languages out of these 10 almost 5 are back end programming languages okay two of one of i think one of them as multifunctional but five of them are back end programming languages okay javascript is basically your ui language sql is your database language i think php swift is your uh, ios language so that way three are already checked out majority of them are yes your back end programming languages back end engineers comprise 70% of 17% of global it workforce as of 2019 so of the total developers let's say if there are 1 million developers 17% of them are back end engineers owing to an extensive knowledge base it is easy to trans- transition into other verticals like data full stack etc now once you're a back end engineer and suddenly you find that okay i do not want to restrict myself to back end engineering what more can i do you can be a full stack developer you can learn html css javascript react or you know any language and transition into being a full stack developer so now you have liberty to do back end as well as front end or if you are completely you know bored out with doing back end engineering you can just learn some data science and uh, transition into being a data engineer now when i say learn some data science why is it easy because you already know a programming language data science also requires programming languages like sql python golang so it is relatively you know the options that a back end engineer has are huge okay also you can go be a cloud engineer you can just write applications for cloud or you know do cloud management stuff like that now coming back to golang so where is go like we didn't see golang in the top 10 for this month but where does go stand so basically go is the third highest paid programming language across the globe as a study done by stack overflow last year so as of 2019 uh, golang was the third highest paid programming language across the globe go is also the fifth most loved so when i say most loved that means people love to code in go okay third in the most wanted third in the most wanted signifies that how many employers want people with golang skills so it is number 3 on the list and number 16 on the popularity now why it is number 3 on the list because it is not very popular that makes it a rare language that makes go skill a unique skill to have based on the tob uh, ranking go was ranked 10th in 2010 so march of 2010 so for the same year in march go was among the top 10 languages it was among the top 15 skills to have it is still among the top 15 skills to have as an it engineer 
adoption of go is increasing every month so basically there's a month on month comparison that is available on tob website and if you go and see there so month on month there's almost a 1% increase now on a global scale a 1% increase is massive now it was also named as the language of the year 2019 and 16 so this is an internal criteria which tob has and they publish some language ranking every year they name one language as a language of the year they they did the go achieve and go had this title for 2009 and 2016 2009 is basically when go was launched and 2016 yeah now coming back to what does it take to become a backend engineer enthusiasm there's a lot that happens in backend engineering uh, i'm not going to be saying that okay, it's a very easy tough to go on no it's not going to be easy you need uh learning one language or learning one technology is not sufficient every two or three months you're going to be learning something new some other programming language or probably some other technology but that does not mean that it's super difficult and nobody can get into it once you're into it you would love the way it progresses and that's why i say enthusiasm unless you're enthusiastic about it unless you have that energy you're going to drain out basically passion so you need to understand that sometimes a problem can be resolved in 15 minutes sometimes it take 15 days so unless you're passionate about what you are doing unless you love your work you're not going to spend that time on the screen so if you love it if you love if you feel the connect with that work it's going to be awesome learning skills how fast are you able to absorb the content on the internet how fast are you able to you know absorb new skills upscale uh, upscale yourself how fast are you able to think around a problem okay if uh, just taking back our road and the truck car example there was one solution that i gave there could be 10 solutions coming in from all of you people okay so those are the pro- problem solving things how are you going to solve problem someone might say that okay let the road be build a flyover for trucks let the car go under it or build an underpass simple problem solving how are you, how many ways can you solve a problem vision now you as a back end developer would never be able to write the whole application because it's vast it's very huge but you need to have that vision you need to understand that okay you need to see the big picture where your coding effort is going and what you're building for once you're able to see that vision once you're able to you know be in line with that uh, big picture you'll understand that okay what difference does your code make dream big like i said not everybody is the highest paid dev- but then that doesn't mean that something is stopping you or uh, doesn't mean that you can you're not going to be the best of the best it's purely about how much effort that you want to put in and a little bit of pes- a little bit of pessimism or you know often it is said a pinch of salt basically you need to be slightly cautious about yourself never get ahead of yourself you be over confident because okay sometimes people have done this that without even compiling the code they push it out and they said yeah it will work and then the code doesn't even compile so be a little bit pessimistic always verify what you do because those are your because that's your work and that reflects you okay now coming to future prospects it's full of opportunities as you've we, we already seen through the whole webinar what are the different opportunities that can come across you what are the different kind of works that you do okay so the opportunities are endless you just have to understand what suits you or your work style or your skill set the best and acquire it the very exposure of various technical skills make this role the most relevant one now like i already told that it's easy to transition into another field so to, tomorrow if you feel that okay your company is you you need to be hired in some company and that company requires a person to know full be a full stack and not just back end you can devote a week of your time or two or learn some basic uh, ui language and become a full stack engineer there's nothing stopping you that way flexibility to make a career change at any given time of course from a back end engineer to a full stack to maybe a architect to maybe a you know a data engineer you have all the choices because it's just that you are at the core fundamental of it and after that it's just a hand away that what skill you want to acquire and it's every skill you learn is basically a supplement to go back end engineering and giving you a new, new role but yeah back end engineering knowing this thing is a basic lucrative pay and increasing demand for highly skilled workers i think we've already covered this topic how the pay is good consistent evolution is the key learning various skills beyond the domain so you learn go today and then you you can you cannot sit and say that okay yeah, i have learned go today and i'm not going to learn anything further than another year 
that does not happen once you join a company or you start working for someone and then you realize that okay oh my god their application is on cloud and i know nothing about cloud so you need to learn cloud you need to understand how go works on cloud how go is how the behavior is different over cloud okay so all those learning should never stop basically be it back end engineering front end engineering or even in your real life it has to happen option to move into higher roles like technical and system architects so of course once you are good enough at problem solving and you can understand the bigger picture better your future prospects are endless your you can your progress is going to be good